Okay, so in this video I'm gonna show you how to take the content of the OLED display and save it as an image to your PC. And not just taking the photo, but the actual pixel representation of what's displayed on the display. So I have this simple gauge project using the Arduino Uno and the OLED screen. And this one is the SSD 1306 128 by 64 pixel resolution connected using the I2C connection. And it's just showing this simple animation of the gauge going from the minimum to maximum values and then go back. And again, I want to take the pixels that are displayed on the OLED screen and save them as an image to my PC. And I will show you three ways how to do that. And the first way is to use Walkway, which is a free online Arduino emulator that I use for many of my projects. And if I scroll down, I can create a new project using the Arduino Uno. And if I click this plus icon, I can add the display that I'm using, the OLED display SSD 1306, and then connect it to the I2C connection. So the ground goes to ground, the VCC goes to 5 volts, the SCL goes to A5, and SDA goes to pin A4. So it's the same connection as for my Arduino in the real world. Then I need to go to the library manager and edit the U8G2 library. That's the library that I'm using for drawing stuff on the display. Go to the sketch file and copy and paste the code from the Arduino sketch. Finally, press the run button and we should see the same animation running on the OLED display in the browser. Now what's cool about Wokwe is I can right click this display and select save image or copy image. And if I then open some graphic editor, for example, photo P, I can just paste the image in here. So edit, paste image and it should be there. And this is probably the simplest and fastest way how to save the image from the OLED screen. But if you want to save an animation, you have to manually export every single frame, which might take some time. So for the second method, let's try capturing the video of the real OLED display. And for that, I would usually use my phone, but this time I will use something different. And that's this microscope from the company called Andon Star, since they were kind enough to sell it to me and became the sponsor of today's video. So thank you, Andon Star. Now, there are certain advantages of using the microscope to capture the video. You can get much closer to the display when capturing the video and pretty much fill the entire frame with just the pixels. And you also get almost no perspective distortion. I like this microscope because it has this big 10 inch display so you can see every single detail. It also has the adjustable LED lights and interchangeable lenses. It also includes endoscope and a lot of different accessories. Actually, so many that I haven't tried all of those yet. And here is the video that I've just recorded. There is a little bit of blinking, but that's something that's hard to get rid of because of the synchronization. But other than that, we see all the individual pixels. So let's zoom in a little bit and capture it again. And the blinking is slightly worse, but now the pixels are as big as they could be. So I've only made one more change, and that is adding pixels into corners. With those, it will be much easier to get the screen size. For the next steps, I will be using the Adobe After Effects, but any video editor should do the trick. So here is the imported video resized to nicely fit inside the frame. And I've used this grid to see if those individual pixels are somehow aligned inside this grid, which seems to be the case. So after that, I've applied the curves to get a little bit more contrast and another grid, which is slightly bolder to only see the insides of those pixels, the middle parts of those pixels, and then apply the mosaic effect, which will pixelate the image. Now it's kind of dark because we are only pixelating the inside portions of those pixels. So I will apply the threshold effect and that should fix it. Finally, I want to hide those corner pixels and that could be done by drawing four small rectangles in the black color. And if I want, I can also show the grid to simulate the look of the display. And this is pretty much the accurate pixel representation of what was displayed on the OLED display on the real one. Now you might notice that for some frames it looks kind of strange. For example, this one, you can see that the number is kind of strange looking. But if I show only the original video, it's actually there. So again, it's just a matter of synchronization between the OLED display and the camera. So now in this frame, the camera is most likely capturing two frames at the same time. But other than that, I think it looks very nice. And in a very short time, we were able to capture entire sequence, which consists of about 130 frames. Obviously, you need to have some video editor and you need to know how to use it. As always, there is also another option, and I was experimenting with this one a little bit, and that is using the processing application. So here is a simple processing sketch playing the looped resized video. And here is the same video with the threshold effect being applied. And I can probably continue like this and do the same adjustments as I've done inside the After Effects, but it would probably take me more time, because I know very little about processing application. So let's talk about the first option, how to save an image from the OLED display to your PC. And this option is actually available for both the real Arduino and the Wokovi sketch. 
ended using the UHG2 built-in function called writeBufferXBM, which is exactly designed for our use case, which will take the buffer and save it, actually send it using the serial port. And there is an example down here, so if I open this screenshot example, copy the code into the clipboard and paste it into our walk with sketch and then I have to uncomment the correct initialization line for our display which is SSD 1306 and it's the hardware IT Core C connection so I believe that this line and so what this sketch is doing is it's just drawing simple message saying hello world and then it's using this write buffer XBM function to write the content of the buffer using the serial port so let's run the simulation and right away you can see that there is some output inside the serial output so i'll stop the simulation and copy one piece of this code so starting from here going up here now it might be tempting to copy this array into the image to cpp website because there is an option to paste the byte array and convert it back to the image but if i do so and i have to get rid of this beginning and click the read as horizontal you will see that the image down here is somehow wrong and you can see how wrong it is once i paste it into the photo p editor and the problem is that the bytes are swapped and while there is a checkbox to swap the bits in byte when I'm generating the image, there is no such a checkbox when I'm converting the byte array into the image itself. So I have to do this in a different way. I will create a new file, being the text file, but I will change the extension to be XBM, and then open it in Notepad and paste our byte array in there. And the XBM file format could be opened, for example, by the Irfan view. So now we have a correct representation of what's displayed on the OLED display. We just need to invert the colors. So let's try to use this method with our original sketch with the gauge sketch to export the whole animation. So this is our gauge sketch. And the only thing that I need to do is to copy this UHG2 write buffer XBM. So after we send the buffer to the display, I want to also send the buffer to the serial port. It might be also a good idea to start the serial communication. So from this setup, I will copy serial begin and paste it into my setup function, which is located here. So I'll paste the serial begin at the speed of 9600 bouts and restart the simulation. And immediately you can see that the serial output is filled with characters, so I'll keep it running for a while. And you can see on the display how slow this is animating because we have to output all those characters. So now we are down to very slow frame rate, but that's perfectly fine. Let's keep it running for a few more seconds. And once I feel I have enough frames, I can just stop the simulation and copy everything into clipboard and paste it into a new file. So I'll create a new text file. Let's call this animation frames and paste everything in there. And since the last frame seems to be incomplete, I'll just get rid of the last frame. I should still have at least a few of those frames in there. Now I want to split this file into individual frames, into individual files. And for that, I found this Stack Overflow page doing exactly that using the PowerShell. So this is the example that I will be using. So I'll start PowerShell and get the content of our animation frames file. And I want to always copy 67 lines because if I open that file, the last line for one frame is line 67 and then output it to files named frame counter and the xbm file format so press enter key and we should see our files in the folder and again opening the file with the irfan view will show us the content which should be matching the content of the oled screen we only have like 14 different frames but if we would keep it running for a longer time we can get all the different frames and get the full animation so that's the third way how to get content of the OLED display and save it as an image. If you want to then convert the XBM files into some more reasonable formats, for example the PNG file format, you can select file, batch conversion and rename and convert those to PNG images and at the same time you can also invert the colors. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas about capturing content from the OLED screen that you can use in your own projects. Again, all of those methods have some pros and cons, so it's up to you which one you choose. A big thanks goes to Andon Star for sending me the microscope. I'm pretty sure I will use it also in my other projects. And perhaps also try the other lenses. I know there is one that you can get real up close to the point where one pixel will fill the entire frame. As usual, the links to everything that I've shown here are in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.